The jury in the James Fursillo uh, second degree murder trial, commonly known as the Sammy Atim streetcar shooting, just retired a couple of minutes ago after several months of uh, hearing evidence. And when the judge said at 11.02, the case is now submitted to you for your verdict, I gotta tell you, my eyes filled with tears every single time I hear that. Here we have a police officer, a Toronto police officer, but it could be anybody, um, actually. Every time there's a jury trial, somebody is fundamentally putting his, his fate, his life, in the hands of 12 strangers, in this case 11 because we lost a juror on the way, but in 11 or 12 people whom they've never met, have no way of knowing. It's a fundamentally opaque process and a great leap of faith. And it just kind of takes my breath away. Now that the jury has retired, uh, they, are, they are sequestered. It means they're kept together, they're kept in a private place, they uh, are not allowed to watch radio or television or go online, etc. And their phone calls home are monitored, uh, monitored in that they can only phone and say, hey, I'm okay. And it's a chance now that we can tell you some of the things that didn't make it in front of the jury. Because uh, the judge decided that uh, the state of mind of Sammy Yatim, the 18-year-old teenager who was shot to death on the streetcar by James Fursillo on July 27, 2013, the judge decided, I think quite properly for what it's worth, but my opinion doesn't matter, that the uh, state of mind of uh, Sammy Yatim was irrelevant. It had a tremendous impact on the defense that uh, Constable Fursillo's lawyers were able to offer they had planned to call an expert witness, a former police officer who is now a, a criminology professor at Simon Fraser University in uh, Vancouver. And he's an expert in what's called victim precipitated homicide. In the case of police officers, that's sometimes known as suicide by cop. And uh, Peter Brody, the lawyer for the constable, intended to call this fellow to testify um, about what he thought of this case. Sammy Atim had had some difficulties in the, the weeks and months before his death. He'd been kicked out of his dad's house. He was, um, at least according to some of the text messages and uh, emails he sent, which this, uh, this evidence would have come out through this expert. He uh, seemed despondent, he was angry, he was making Google searches for cash jobs, applying for welfare, didn't have any money, told his friends he didn't have any money, etc. And according to the expert who didn't get to testify before the jury, these are some of the signs that uh, make up perhaps as many or as much as 10% of the shootings where police kill people. Um, they do so because the people themselves uh, allegedly want to die and sort of engineer a, conf a lethal confrontation with police. So that's what the jury didn't get to hear. They also don't know, um, which Post Media has found out, that uh, in the year before uh, the Sammy Yatim shooting, Constable Fursillo's uh, reliance on his firearm brought him to the attention of an early warning program at the Toronto Police. This early warning program is designed, it's not a discipline, it's designed as a sort of uh, check on officers who may be headed uh, for trouble. They may be using too much force, they may be pulling their gun too often, and in Constable Fursillo's case, it appears that after he pulled his, or pointed his weapon at people three times, this triggers this alert. It apparently happened twice to him. In other words, he had two such alerts and he was supposed to have been counseled and monitored and all of the uh, incidents were supposed to have been reviewed um, to see if he was relying on his gun too often. Um, but according to Mr. Browdy, Constable's lawyer, uh, this nothing ever happened after, except that he was told that the incidents were gonna be reviewed but he was never counseled or monitored. So that's some of the stuff the jury didn't hear. They certainly have enough evidence to decide this case, and I think the hopes and wishes of all of us 
in the greater community should go to them because they have a hell of a difficult task ahead.